So, Professor Shirai and Mr. Kobayashi and Lucas san So, we'd like to carry the discussion on carbon neutral and green finance. Uh, so, I, Kurahashi, will be moderating and I will be asking the questions. So, first, I have a question to Kobayashi san. So, earlier on, you talked about green finance. So, green bond. You showed us the graph showing the total amount of green bonds from JHF. So from the peak times, inclusive of both products, to, with and without a government guarantee, the amount seems to be declining. So when you say green bond, uh, what we, why, why is that? Can you elaborate on the reason why there's been decline in the amounts? Yes, first, uh, Luca san uh, thank you very much for your kind words. So we very much appreciate uh, your information disclosure and your cooperation. Thank you very much. And uh, concerning the question just raised, uh, recently green bonds have been declining, and the reason for that is flat 35 loan track record that has been coming down as well. That is the only reason, because as I mentioned earlier on, uh, recently long-term interest rates have gone up and flat 35 interest is 1.91%. On the other hand, for the variable interest rate from the private sector, 0.2%, 0.28% at the lowest levels. So uh, going forward, is in, if interest rates continues to rise, it may become difficult for us. However, many in Japan, many of the mortgage loan users do not believe that the Japanese interest rate is going to rise all that much. So if there is a huge interest rate difference, flat 35, 1.9%, uh, rather than that, maybe they will be borrow. They will be. But they will borrow the floating rate that is like the zero point three percent or so. So as a result of that, flat thirty five has been coming down by about thirty percent per year. And furthermore, as mentioned at the JHF from April of this year. Uh, so the standards are going to be introduced two years in advance. Then there are going to be some housing that would not be that would no longer be eligible to flat 35 meaning that the share will go down further but the as one of the government affiliated uh, organization we committed that we are going to be committing to energy uh, energy efficiency so it's like noblesse oblige this is something that we are demonstrating and i think it is necessary for us to demonstrate that and implement these measures this is my personal view, not JHF's view. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the, at the JHF, uh, the green bond has been issuing uh, at the green bond. But what about uh, at the private uh, the institutions? In case of the private financial institutions, I th I think to them it's very really difficult for them to issue the green bond. Uh, Kobayashi, -san, what do you think is the reason behind this difficulty? Well, in case of the flat thirty-five. Well, uh, the scheme for the plus 35S is already being established, and because of that, well, uh, the CO, uh, well, uh, the CO2 uh, reduction impact is being certified by uh, the uh, certification organization. And furthermore, uh, under the current uh, the financial environment, the agreement uh, is now available in the market. and. Uh, the uh, uh, paying uh, for uh, the private sectors uh, to uh, issue uh, the green bond, uh, even uh, by paying uh, the fee for the certification. Uh, such motivation is not available in case of our organization upon issuing the green bond. As a pilot project, the Ministry uh, of Environment uh, had provided the support for the cost of the issuance. So initially, that actually was quite effective, I believe. And, but that sort of things is going to be difficult uh, to happen generally. Uh, thank you very much. The difference in long-term and short-term interest rates and green bond progress, they should be separate, but for some reason they seem to be linked together. 
So, Luca-san, I would like to ask you a question. So, in Japan, there is a division of markets, unfortunately, that we can see. But how about in Europe? The EU private financial institutions, can they originate housing green bonds? And in terms of technological standards and cost, are they buried? In Japan, those will be barriers, but how about in Europe? Yeah, I mean, in Europe, the private uh, banking sector, they can issue green bonds. It's uh, one of the major revolutions that have been done. It's based especially on the fact that in Europe, mortgage lenders, they can access the market uh, mainly with two instruments, cover bonds, which is uh, still under the, also under discussion in Japan, um, and also securization. Via these two instruments, they can tap the market uh, in making a huge volume of uh, green bonds, like is happening. Most of the uh, largest banks in Europe are massively using green bonds on, um, on the mortgage market. Um, we have introduced also um, a, a new legislation in October, which was called Green Bond Standards which allow banks not only to issue green bond on green asset, but also to issue green bond on brown asset. How does it use and proceed? What does it mean? Recognizing the cathartic role of the banks, the private sector banks, banks can take a brown asset cover pool and commit the cash flow coming from this to green purposes. So actually, the banks are acting to clean up the economy and transform brown asset in green asset. Um, I hope that I was able to answer to your question. But I mean, no, the, the, the private sector, which in Europe is called Capital Markets Union, is an initiative, is designed exactly to activate a strong participation of the private sectors to the green revolution. Thank you. Well, thank you very much in relation to that uh, the mortgage regulation uh, is available. You, that's what you mentioned in line with that, uh, the regulation and the things are moving along. And the mortgage regulation, well, I believe that that's the basis for that. For example, in case of the EU, the environmental related sustainable activities taxonomy is available according to my understanding. And I think that there has to be some sort of relationship with the taxonomy. Is my understanding correct? Yeah, I mean, um, the, the basic le le legislation that you are referring to is the Mortgage Credit Directive, which was done after the crisis of Lehman in 2008. Mm -hmm. So it's a plan. The European Commission is uh, studying on how to improve this directive by including taxonomy rules and mm -hmm. digitalization. Those are two aspects now currently under discussion in the European Commission and in the European Parliament to refresh this uh, very important piece of legislation with a green touch and a digital touch. Um, so probably the next parliament, the next mandate starting uh, next year, will be looking very much to this topic on how to change the mortgage credit directive in this respect. Thank you very much. So mortgage creative directive, Shire. So the mortgage creative directive so I think uh, with taxonomy and digitalization, I think things are progressing rather dynamically in Europe. So, Professor, should I have about in Japan? Green, well, the taxonomy, if that is going to be created in Japan, I don't think we are all that active in it's not being, that kind of work is not being sufficiently done. So yesterday in session two, they, there was talk that there was a regulation restriction uh, concerning rental housing in UK, but in Japan, it's not possible. And I asked Emlet and they said that be, there's no consensus in Japan, so it's not possible. And so the systems infrastructure, mortgage, something like mortgage creative director and taxonomy so concerning this, in order to promote carbon neutral, I think those are the fundamentals required. However, these are not present here in Japan. So can I ask uh, Professor Shira your views on this? You are mute. 
thank you. In my presentation, I talked about ASEAN taxonomy. So in Asia, uh, the taxonomy uh, is being created, uh, Australia, Korea as well. Well, not for, not uh, in China, not transition, but for green months, they have what a taxonomy called catalog. So coming up with the financial market, uh, what is green and what is transition? And even if we say transition, we can't just say transition forever, like EU is, is doing, there's a timeline and there's a threshold. So unless we have those in place, it will remain ambiguous. So we talked about G funds, G funds like life insurance companies and banks by 2050, they are, when they are trying to make their portfolio uh, net zero, those need to be clear or else they will not be able to provide loans. So there are serious discussions underway. And unfortunately in Japan, and mainly from METI, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, they have the technology roadmap about for about 10 or so sectors, like steel and cement uh, for high emission industries, they created a technology roadmap. So if you look at the current Japanese environment by 2030, for uh, coal thermal fired, uh, what would be the coal firing with ammonia? 20%, uh, 30%, 40%. So there are technological possibilities. So the good point is that the companies can use those, refer to those, and they will be able to come up with it, their own transition uh, plan. But there's no threshold like in EU. So from a global perspective, is, is it really science-based or sectoral decarbonization pathway, like a 1.5 degree pathway? It's unclear. So this, because this is so unclear, investors are reluctant to invest in Japan. Something like a technical roadmap is fine, but there should be threshold. So to what extent is okay? That needs to be clarified or else companies won't invest there because there's no target. So that is what is unfortunate about the policy in, in Japan. So something like taxonomy actually is required, but Japan started to say transition finance for high emission industries. We were the first. However, while we were just stuck on the tax, uh, technology roadmap, uh, Singapore came up with something more. And Singapore is looking at the EU. And ICMA, ICMA is right relaxed. Uh, the green bond conditions are very loose, uh, too loose. And UK, UK CBI climate bond initiative, it's more stringent. And Singapore was looking at both. They looked at the EU threshold and they use that as the first setting and the other thresholds for high emission industries. This is based on CBI, so the thresholds is becoming st stricter and stricter. So Singapore's taxonomy and there's ASEAN's uh, taxonomy, there are two. But Singapore taxonomy is the model for the ASEAN taxonomy, but it's more stringent. So if Singapore is first, uh, then the uh, ASEAN taxonomy comes second. So Sing it, because it is based on Singapore taxonomy and the green criteria, they're looking at both EU and CBI and they use their thresholds. So it's the highest standard, green st standard. And they're not just emulating EU, but EU has not been highlighting transition uh, part. However, in Asia, because there's a lot of coal being used, we just uh, increasing renewables like in the EU may not be possible, so we have to do more transition. But everyone is saying uh, it's greenwashing. No one is funding a Asian for uh, that. So for transition, they call, they're calling it amber. They made it orange so that for this part, uh, they have set the thresholds. So this is uh, outstanding. So Singapore... They came up with a very clear definition for first in COP28, they announced their ta uh, taxonomy. And also, not only that, uh, coal early phase out, uh, they came up with that as well. But we can't phase out unless there's money. So in order to raise funds very clearly by 2035 or the operational period for the operation 
period, I think it was 20 years, an essay on 30 years. So all of these are clearly stipulated. But still, there's no financing. And that, then they came up with carbon credit. They're trying to create a carbon credit market. Because in Asia, uh, it's still young. The coal-fired plant is only about 15 years. So maybe they, if they use it, continue to use the thermal plants for about 15 years, if it will be avoided emission if they phase out early. And if these can be certified as carbon credits, so the companies, other companies in the world who want to reduce emissions can purchase that. So in COP28, they came up with an idea for such markets as well. So what is great about Singapore is that they looked at EU and also they looked at CBI and they incorporated all of these. And they came up and they reflected transition finance that which is specific to Asia. So if Japan should have been able to do this as well, but they weren't ahead of us. That is unfortunate. So Japan's ideas is not bad, but we tend to be inward looking as uh, we make a discussion. But Singapore looks at the entire world and carbon credit Rockefeller together with Rockefeller Foundation and other NGOs. They are collaborating with the global players. In Japan, we're trying to do it all independently. So various NGOs and what GFANS is saying, rather than collaborating, we're not. But Singapore is collaborating and they're incorporating other elements and that is very novel. So unfortunate that Japan can't do the same. So without taxonomy, investors can't trust us. And with what is good about EU is it's not only taxonomy. EU has taxonomy, and not only that, uh, for corporate information disclosure, and as Lucas mentioned earlier, for funds, to for finance. The participants in the financial market, these are obligated. Green standards, EU green standards, it's voluntary, but the taxonomy is included. So not just creating taxonomy, that does not move anything, but this is linked to information disclosure, and that is why we're seeing development. Well, thank you very much for that. Well, anyhow, uh, the point is that Japan has been uh, focusing domestically, and this has continued on because of that. It seems that we are far behind from what's happening in the world. That uh, that is something uh, that we would have to recognize about what is happening in Japan, unfortunately. Well, at this time, with the discussion, well, uh, well we started our discussion with uh, the housing finance, and we also moved on to the wide topics about the taxonomy. And, well, uh, Professor Shirai, in your book, you, mentioned about, you are mentioning about the maturity of the civil society. And I believe that in that, including the, that maturity of the civil society, it, well, Japan is far behind, unfortunately speaking. We were able to recognize all these points through the discussion. In that sense, this discussion that we've had was quite valuable. Well, uh, with that, we would like to conclude the discussion. Thank you very much for your participation. Well, with that, we would like to conclude the session two of the Tokyo International uh, the Forum for the carbon neutral and the green finance. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us.